Hi, my name is Lena and I'm a music producer, musician and a educator. I also have a YouTube channel called LNA Does Audio Stuff. Splice has very kindly asked me to be here today to give you a little tutorial and I'm tending to do so because I'm here today to share my top five bit more advanced sample manipulation techniques in Ableton Live. Yeah, so let's just get into it now. Hey, okay. So the idea of this tutorial is that I'm going to show you five different ways to do sample manipulation, but actually during the whole process, I'm going to create a beat. In Splice, I have created a collection uh, called Sample Manipulation by LNA. So all the samples that I use in this tutorial are available for you to use through Splice. So the link to this collection is down below. So what we have in here, we have a site. <sighs> We have vocals by Kara. I follow Kara on Instagram and she's very cool. So I decided to pick her sample. And then we have a <laughs> turkey <laughs> sound. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna comment that one, but it's a guy being very in painful, painful. Oh no, yes. <laughs> and then we have a dog. So we're gonna start with the dog. And I'm just gonna drop it like it's hot. To the arrangement view, there we go. Okay, so now we have a sample in arrangement view. So let's just pick actually just a little area of it. So I'm just gonna highlight the area I want to pick and then comment E like that. We delete everything else and we just use that. In this point, I want to warp the sample and I just want to create a little rhythm. So, okay, done, 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 done. So I'm just going to duplicate that like that. So we have a little rhythm going. <laughs> awesome. And the song is done. So let's just start with that sample there. I'm going to transpose it minus 14 steps down like that. So it sounds like blah, blah sound. After this, we're going to go to one of the most important factors, which is the warp modes. So warp, we need to make sure that the sample is indeed warped. And then after that, I can go to the warp modes. And then from here, I am going to pick Complex Pro. We will be using a couple of these different warp modes today. So in this one, I want to keep the formant in about 100 and then envelope. Actually, I'm going to put as low as possible, which is eight. These envelope affects the spectral characteristics of the sample. I want to use that one in to create this cool texture on it. So that's when the envelope is in eight. And then when it's high, it sounds a bit more like the dog does. So what I'm going to do now is copy that and paste it on the top of the other ones that I want to be a kick. So now the rhythm is already a bit more interesting. And then let's just go to the other sound. And in this one, I want to transpose it up, up. And I'm going to put it in plus 18 steps. And instead of now going to Complex Pro, I want to go to Texture. And in this one, I want to play with the grain size and flux. So flux creates a certain uh, randomization to the grain size and then grain size is of course the sound grain size. And actually I figure out that I feel like, especially if you put the grain size like higher, it creates a very cool, interesting structure, a bit like bah, bah. So next stage, we're gonna actually consolidate it. So I'm gonna highlight the two bars that I've created and then common J and we're going to consolidate. So now you might be, but Lena, it sounds a bit bad. So what can we do for it now? Actually, I want to make it a bit faster. So I'm going to go to this here. So we are halving the playback speed there. There we go. But now it's going to make it much more interesting if I now transpose. In this point, I would like to show a little trick called vocoder on this type of sample manipulated thing. Because especially if we want a slightly more percussive sound, very fast, then 
Check this out. Play a lot with the dry and wet. So this technique might have been quite familiar for you, but the next one is we're gonna be working with simpler. So if you're not used to simpler that much, then this will be fun for you. So I've just created a MIDI track and I'm gonna add a simpler to the track. And we're gonna actually create a chord progression now. Before we do anything, I just wanna make sure that uh, I have activated the top right corner where you can see the, the actual keyboard logo. So that is so that I can play the instrument with my computer keyboard. So for this one, I'm actually gonna use the Kara's vocals. So instead of putting the vocals on the track, what I'm gonna do is drop, drag and drop them on the simpler. Woohoo! So I'm gonna work in the classic mode. I'm gonna extend the screen so we can see a bit more. I'm gonna use these little flags on the right and the left to like limit a nice little area of Kara's vocals. There we go. So now it sounds like this. <laughs> Like that. So next thing we're gonna do is using the loop, we're activating that. And then I'm gonna uh, add that 100% of fade because fade is cool when we're looping. And then we're gonna actually put the start section quite uh, in the end. So I'm gonna limit this area even further to create this very cool, like slightly pulsing fabric. And then I'm gonna go a couple octaves lower How nice is that? <laughs> to make it a bit more interesting, I'm gonna add a little bit of LFO and I'm gonna add a square wave. And then I'm gonna go to the filter until I get a pulsing sound that I like. A little bit take the high end of from the filter, there we go. So let's just see how that works with the tempo. We have a very nice chord instrument there. And put a click on. I just match the pulsing rate, the pulse, the, 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 the sound into the tempo. And let's go, let's play something. So it's a bit out of time, let's just quantize it and make everything fine again. Next thing is groove pull. So we're actually gonna create hi-hats using the goose duck uh, turkey, turkey sound. So I'm just gonna bring the turkey sound here. So what I want to do now is play with the groove pull. So groove pull is in April to live a very, very cool thing. So I'm just gonna take, cut a little piece of the drums that we created or the percussion situation. I'm gonna just copy it to the groove pull and it creates a groove out of that sample. So let's just put that in there. And now I'm just gonna drag and drop that into this uh, turkey sample. So now basically we took this the groove dun, dun, tch, dun, dun, from the drums, from the percussion to the groove pull. And now we're gonna match that groove to the turkey. What's for dinner? That's the turkey hi-hats. So I'm gonna actually quite hard quantize it. So I'm gonna use eight note. So actually let's go to 16. <laughs> then I'm gonna add a little bit random and 100% of velocity just so that we can get a little bit velocity also changes in the hi-hats. <laughs> so right now you're probably like, how in earth is she gonna make a hi-hat out of that? Well, let me show you. So now when I go to the sample, I right click it and I choose convert drums to new MIDI track. Yeah, that's happening. I get a drum sample, which is gonna sound a bit weird. Okay, so only thing that we want from that is actually the hi-hat. So I'm gonna just delete everything else. So we have now hi-hats, but I don't want it to be ace 8 or any fancy drum, drum, drum situation. I want it to be turkey sound. So I'm gonna go here and look for a cool area of the turkey. So I want that little piece there. 
There we go. So I'm just going to line it again, Command E to drag it. And then I'm going to find, so this is the hi-hat is that playing now. So I'm going to actually just take the sample I just created and I'm going to drop it to the simpler that is playing the hi-hats noise currently. So it's just going to replace it. So now instead of an actual hi-hat sound, we're get, getting the turkey sound. So let's listen how that sounds. I could use the little, uh, the different sound waves to kind of figure out what kind of sound I want. So example, I kind of like that. So let's just see how that sounds with everything else. I'm just going to delete the turkey and uh, let's just loop it as well. And then to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to use the random panning on that. So the next thing is clip envelope. So for this one, we're going to use the site. <sighs> that one. So I'm just going to add that to the track. Let's just solo that. And then I'm going to double click that and we're going to warp it. And then let's open the envelopes of the clip. So I'm going to press on the left lower corner and there's the uh, thing with the uh, two little balls there. Let's go to the clip. And from here, we're going to go to transpose, transposition, transposition, transposition. I don't know. And I'm just gonna, it's a very small sample, but I'm still gonna go a bit crazy with this uh, transposition. And I took the pen tool from the top right corner and I just start drawing on it like that. Let's open that for a little bit so you can see. So maybe something like this. I took it a bit too high. Let's be a bit. That's more like it. That's why I like it. Okay, so the next thing, I need to go to the warp modes and from there I'm going to go to textures. So we have the grain size and flux open. And then because now I can actually use the envelopes here, grain size, and do the same thing. So let's try a little bit of drawing. <laughs> so cool. And flux. <laughs> I like that. And the next thing, we're going to actually just revert it. There we go. And let's put it in the beginning of the song. So I go there, create, insert silence. And uh, let's put the one bar. Okay. And uh, let's put that there. And uh, let's see what happens when the song starts and uh, with the music. Oh, imagine that with delay. There we go. That's nice. Next thing we're going to add is bass and we're going to create that with Wavetable. Wavetable is very cool because it uses Wavetable uh, synthesis. So we can actually add these samples into Wavetable. It basically uses these loop samples as a basis of sound. And then it kind of variates bef between the, the, the different wave shapes. And that is why it's so cool. Wavetable. So let's create a new MIDI track. And in there we're going to add an... Uh, default wave table, wave, wave table, uh, um, uh, <coughs> sound. So uh, we're going to drop that sample to the oscillator one. Go and let's extend this so that we can see all the controls. So first things first. So on the right side here on the oscillator, we have a control that we can choose from the wave position. Uh and then I want to activate the sub on the left to create a cool subby bass. <laughs> then let's put this envelope in the matrix. Let's see where it says oscillate one and envelope two. So I'm just gonna roll that to 100%. So these values can be negative or positive, zero being neutral and different amounts affect how the modulation is being applied. And that means that now this envelope is controlling uh, this oscillator here and add a example square wave. And I'm gonna go to LFL one and put that 100% to the oscillator one. you can see that now it started to work on there. Bringing a little bit more depth into our bass, I'm going to go to the oscillator 2 and instead of the basic waves types, I'm going to go to the collection. And then let's try some cool. Three, we're going to go oscillator 2, envelope 3 and just play with that. I'm 
let's just close this and create some cool bass line to it. There we go, and then put it on rhythm because that was not on time. And then sometimes, especially with this kind of things, I think it's easier, example, if you first create the sample and the, uh, the melody bit, and then you go back into the into the controls of the instrument. So example, just controlling the envelopes in the instrument actually brought a lot of expression to the bass. That is five ways to use sample manipulation in Ableton Live. So hey, that was the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my YouTube channel, LNA Does Audio Stuff for more Ableton Live tutorials and music production content. Thank you Splice so much for having me here today. And hey, please let me know, what are your favorite um, sample manipulation techniques down below, even on other doors than Ableton Live? Let's share. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And I'm sure that I will be here soon again. So see you then. Okay, bye.